Hello, everybody, and welcome to our another Academy of Animator Community Critique and Chill, and our last one for November. Um, yeah, this, this is just a place where we can um, submit work for critique um, and practice giving and getting critique. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube and you ever want to come by, come to the Academy of Animated Art Discord channel, please. We'd love to have you and we can get started. Sweet. We have a couple of different submissions um, mm -hmm. kind of spanning the gamut, some from the, uh, the lighting challenge that's for AAA that's uh, due tonight and some other cool projects. And since Erica is here, let's start off with Erica. Um, so this is first, I'm so glad you included a uh, reference. Thanks for doing that. Super helpful. Um, yeah, this is looking no like a cool scene. I can hear, I can hear him snoring. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's cute. So, um, so I wanted to take a, a little different take on the, um, on the angle of the, um, the attic. Um, so I went for like a side shot. Um, and I wanted to include this little airplane up there. Like, um, I was going for like a triangle composition. So you, you look at the window and you're drawn, um, pointing over to the airplane and the airplane points you over to the drawing board or the desk area. Um, and I really like like purples and oranges a lot. And I wanted to have this scene take place at night, but it's a really foggy night. Um, where I got the reference um, in the top left there. Um, I wanted to include um, some god rays. Um, and then on the lower left, yeah, I wanted to like silhouette, um, have some framing elements. Um, so that's, that's where the uh, airplane came in. Um, so after I rendered it, like everything looked pretty decent for a first, for a first round. And then when I uploaded it, it looked super dark. So this actually on the lower left is a kind of a paint over of how I'd like it to look later on. It's a little more bloomy and glowy, and I like to add some trees and some variation to the sky. You know, like there's a moon there, mm -hmm. um, make it a little lighter on the right. Um, and yeah, just have a little bit more um, maybe fill in the room, but not too much. You know, I like mm -hmm. some things just kind of just hinting like the uh, the cello. Um, where it's not too obvious, yeah. Um, but yeah. So that's that's my start. I, I'm new to Maya, um, so this was yeah. <laughs> it was a little bit of a challenge, but any feedback greatly appreciated. Cool. Well, I mean, this is an an excellent start. So it's exciting to see. Thank you. <laughs> Um, does anyone have any feedback right away? Um, just for context, so you did your own paint over, correct? Is that what you said? This one on the bottom left? Yes. Uh, in the paint over, I really like the orangeness from yep. the lamp on the right that you're, yeah, like that whole section looks really cool. If you could achieve that in your CG render, I think that would be because right now it feels like you're probably a little bit duller than that. Yeah, for sure. And then, I—I I mean, I think for like color contrast, and it's not in your paint over, but like it's in one of your reference. I think you could explore more blue tones in your in your god ray and exterior. I mean, I don't think what you have now is is bad necessarily. I think I mean it definitely represents represents moonlight for sure um but think about maybe just adding a bit more blue into that light source mm -hmm. yeah i like how oh sorry go ahead no no i was just cool thank you <laughs> this this reference i like how you there's this blend of the warm interior light with that blue coming in um mm -hmm. that could definitely um happen a bit more in here. So if I brought up the um, the light on the right, on the desk, yeah, they, they might meld together more. Um, I'm having a hard time creating that nice orange glowy effect 
without everything over in the corner looking kind of brown and gross. Um, <laughs> so right now it kind of looks uh, stark. Um, but yeah, I'm not really sure how to go, um, how to add bloom to my project yet. So I'm going to have to explore that a little more. For sure. And there, there are a bevy of ways to do it. Um, and I don't, I don't know which render you're using, but some of them will have different options for that, as well as playing more with like your volumetrics. Um, yeah, this one's Arnold. Okay. Um, and like, those are all like nice things to like, you know, like those like that final, like five, 10% push to really sell it, you know, like, um, I know this is like brushwork, but there's like this, it almost feels like there's dirt on the lens that's causing some of this glow. Like when you look at it to feel like feel more real and it has like a texture qual textural quality to it. Um, and like that's something that you could explore doing and, and there are a couple different ways to do it. But um, I'd say that's towards the end of, of like, getting to the final frame. Sure. The other thing I really like about the paint over is how it, outside the window, it kind of feels like there's hints of things being out there. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that's intentional, but I think that's something you would definitely want to add in the <clears throat> render that you have. So make sure like, it doesn't have to be anything too recognizable, but just that variation and then a little bit of bright part that indicates like the source. I think that's really, really nice in the paint over. So I would like definitely try to get that as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm just not sure how to do it yet. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you like know any Photoshop or like? Oh yeah, I know Photoshop and all that, but um, doing it in Maya and I haven't taken the shader course yet. Um, so it's, I mean, this is like, the kind of thing where you could do a lot of this in Photoshop and like end up at the end with a nice image oh, and okay. then, and then down the road, you could then, um, like continue on like learning nuke, um, or like a different render that has those kind of post-process features. Um, you know, but I think for like a first project limiting how many new things you're learning all at once is probably Ooh. good. So I think, Diana's suggestion of using Photoshop is totally, you know, valid and a, and a good way to approach this. Yeah, okay. like I would try to get as many things as you can in Maya, but like if you can't get it to bloom correctly or like if you can't get the window looking exactly right, I think those are the like tr trickier things to do like in render, especially with what we have like Maya Arnold. So I think, I think, yeah, that, that would be fine at, um, later on. Yeah. Okay. Well then, um, um yeah, I mean this this I just did over yeah in Photoshop a little procreate, just yeah, adding um <laughs> bees and the bloom and all that. I just, you know, I'm a little confused, um, like what would be considered cheating. Um, I really aspire to like the games and you know, obviously like I can't go in there and just like Photoshop it all <laughs> because it has to be it has to be live, but um well, well that's, that's this is your first time in like a 3D software though, right? No. Oh, no, um, no, no. You've... I work, yeah. I have a, um, I have a portfolio and stuff. I'll, I'll put it in my... Cool. Oh, um, cool. Yeah, I couldn't remember. Um, I feel like you said you had worked in yeah, 3D a, a while ago. Yeah, it's, um, it's a proprietary engine that's based off of Unreal 4. Okay. Um, it's, it's really called Core. Gotcha. Yeah, of manticore for about two and a half years and i just kind of fell into the lighting part of it so um but i've never i mean i used to use 3ds max and, and now that's like mm -hmm. people don't use it anymore it's been a while. well then what i would say is like for this one don't sweat photoshop um and there are things that we could look at like like we could talk about some like shader shader work um things that could yeah bring this forward and some other things but if you wanted to if you're looking to get in the games you know i would suggest putting this this scene into unreal um and you could do that separately after you finish this project up um 
and just sounds good just focus on like some of the key lighting concepts for this one and and it's totally fine to use photoshop um you know it's a portfolio piece it's not necessarily cheating you know if it's in your portfolio and someone asks you don't say oh it's all unreal you know you just you <laughs> tell them what you were learning with it and etc so all right cool um yeah and um as far as like some other lighting stuff goes um i think you want like a foggy outside and i think a little bit of god rays is okay but probably the light that's casting on the ground is a little too strong and too sharp for like a foggy outdoors light coming up from a foggy window yeah i would soften that up and also if you can like try to get some variation in the places that it hits so that it's like maybe a little bit not crazy because it's it would be the moon or something but um a little bit brighter like closer to the window so that it's not flat all the way through okay um, and then i think the light bulb is a mesh light did you like make the mesh light brighter so that it would cast the light on there or like did you make one or um it was the one that came with the project that flexo bulb mm -hmm. um the material itself um I just yeah I made it white, um, but then it was casting like an orange. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty bare. <laughs> right, I think for that one, like it, the bulb itself is kind of clipping and also causing like some aliasing. So okay. I would like turn off the emission or do something so that the bulb looks like a pretty bulb, and then do like make another light that's invisible that's doing the actual ca casting of the lights. Oh, okay. And you can shape like the bulb probably in Photoshop or like if you want to add admission because you would want it to be like more bright as it goes to the center and things like that if you want the bulb to look really pretty. So either way, I think I would get rid of like the emission that's already on there because it's being really bright and um, mm -hmm. get the lighting with other new lights that you add in. Sounds good. Thank you. And then, um, and then I see a couple of textures missing on the frames on that wall next to the clock. Um, that I would look into, maybe, because it looks gray. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the glass might have popped out of the, the one is having issues. <laughs> and then the, the, the floor to me looks, it looks like wood that's been recently painted, mm -hmm. um, which could definitely be a look um, to go for, but, but I think where it's not working are in these specks over here. Like the specular highlights along the, um, like the where the boards meet, um, and like my eye gets drawn over to those. Um, you know, if you're gonna keep keep this effect, I think it's it's starting to work in here, um, but then like, yeah, I would I would just take a look at like your roughness values and on the wood mm -hmm. and maybe pull some reference of what you want the floor to look like. Yeah, for sure. And then the carpet currently doesn't look like it's grounded. Like it looks like it's floating. Um, part of this might be the camera angle, um, as well as the the feet of the telescope. Like th right now, they kind of look like they're both are like stuck on top of the frame. Yeah, yeah, it does. And then I think this this is a cool element, and I think you could definitely definitely keep it, and maybe some depth of field would help help here. I'd say it currently with the framing, I wouldn't say it feels like a triangle uh, between this, this, and this. Okay. Um, I feel like I'm kind of drawn from here to here, and then I make a leap over to here. Uh, there's there's like a lot of darkness here that kind of divides the image um into like you know a, a, a two-thirds of it over here and and then like you know another th third over here i know that math doesn't work out with the lines i drew but you know what i mean <laughs> um yeah i think those are those are good first first steps and then uh, I think I've sent the, some course recommendations for for Unreal as well, but um, yeah, I actually bought it. It was on sale. Oh, nice! Yeah, if you want to, for like, and I just know like 
most game recruiting places, uh, big question they ask is, uh, do you work in Unreal and do you know it well? So, yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> so that would be my recommendation. Cool, cool. Sweet. Thank you, guys. Of course. Thanks for submitting. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, next up, we've got Diana. Uh, Diana, do you want to talk about this one? Um, sure, yeah. So this is part one of, I'm trying to do two images with the asset. So the next one will be like the reverse angle with the two cups in the foreground or the two monsters in the foreground and then the guy looking like kind of tired in the moonlight. So well, actually, I don't know how much I should tell. But anyway, this is um, supposed to be like nighttime and they're on the kitchen counter. And I just wanted to make that contrast. So um, my main focus was making them look all warm and cozy. And kind of, yeah, and of course, everything else lighting. <laughs> make sure it's believable. But yeah, I think. Anyone have any feedback right away? I'm just interested as to why you stopped giving us details about this image, Diana. Is this are, is this under NDA? You break no, <laughs> no, because um, I think I posted like an earlier version to somebody, and they did couldn't even tell it was night. So I, in my head, I was like, oh, I should have let them. I should have seen if everyone could tell that it was night. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was yeah, more I like. Think it looks like I think it looks like night. I don't. I mean, this version does to me. Yeah, this version. Mm -hmm. uh, Forrest, can you zoom in on the profile of the foreground character? Like, no, like go go right. Uh oh, this fella. Yeah, for what, I mean, just looking at it small, it seems kind of sharp. But I don't think oh. you're doing anything. You're talking. Which part are you talking about? Are you talking about like the the right side profile of like the of like the head of whatever this monster is or whatever. Like the, especially like this like the, or here. Yeah, yeah. Where you circled the right. edge of the foreground character over like the jar or over. The, oh yeah, there's like a weird transparency. Yeah, the depth just of field really is sharp. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For what yeah, I'm I see trying to do. I got that um, issue before with the doorman sequence. It, it, are is this all one scene, or are the characters on separate layers, or how did you go about doing this? The foreground is on a separate layer because I had like war step the field issue, so I broke it out. Interesting. But I guess I still have it right there. Um. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. But I'll look into it because I yeah I see the like that's weird. Right. Yeah, it's almost like an like an alpha channel issue where maybe the depth of field isn't being considered, mm -hmm. or because like there's almost like the stark line there where it like it kind of feathers off into transparent. Um, yeah, I see what you mean. I love this. I love the pink guy. The pink guy's cool. Yeah, this looks so happy and chill. You just want to be them. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, sure. I'm really liking the spec hits you're getting on his eyeballs. Um, I'm. I like the. I think I really like the subsurface. Like I was wondering, like there's like really strong subsurfacing going on in the lip, um, and I think it's working. Um, I wonder if maybe there's a way to. The red's not working on the red but if it was like a little bit darker over here mm -hmm. um but i know that this light is a top down light now um but yeah i really like i'm drawn here and i really i think that feels really lush it's weird to say about this weird little monster <laughs> uh, scrappily let's see can you just zoom in on the character's eyes and lips for the red one? Yeah. Maybe it might just be Discord. I'm just wondering if you should just for sure in your final like up those samples, and especially in the lips for some reason. Like the <clears throat> lips feel like they're supposed to be smooth and glossy, and then like I think there's like just a little too much noise in there for that to like come across. But again, this could totally be artifacting from streaming. Yeah. There's also 
I mean, I've I've seen other versions of this, but I think there's a, a bump map that's that causes a lot of these uh, weavy wavies. Um, mm. Which, so from seeing yeah. the others, I know that that's there. Um, maybe, yeah, maybe you could play around with its intensity a little bit to either either see if that makes it feel more intentional or see what mm -hmm. knocking it back a little bit does. Um. The, t the oh sorry go ahead. I was just saying, what are you rendering in, Diana? This is really pretty. Arnold, Maya. This is Arnold. Yeah. Um, but this all uh, is a lot of nuke actually. <laughs> no one lights a shot in nuke better than I light a shot in nuke. <laughs> <laughs> this for some reason my eye keeps getting pulled to the spec hits. In particular, oh. that one. Um, and then I start to look at the low-res detail of this teapot. And so I wonder if you could kind of make that, like, just push it back in the image, like, by dropping some of that spec. Because, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, that just feels like, that feels like some low low resy dimpled uh, metal. Yeah, I can definitely like kind of bring it down even more. Um, same for like the big highlight on the right, or just those kind of the warm one in the middle. I mean, if I'm if I'm doing the squint test, it's mainly this guy, this this fella, okay. and then this one. Like, I kind of, I kind of like it from the story side of like making establishing that it's nighttime. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. nice to have this the blue spec hits. Um, you know, implying there's like a blue light source off screen, um, where where this this one's just like super bright and just draws my my attention. Mm. Uh, I like the, the oh. specs on the teapot personally. Maybe the one is a little bright, but it reminded me immediately that there's a nighttime and they're watching TV with blue, and there probably is a lamp light behind the couch or something. For sure. Mm -hmm. I actually liked those spec lights. I thought that was a nice touch. That's, you know, personal taste, maybe. Oh, no, maybe I mean, I think, bright, like, I think the spec is helping. Is, but yeah, just, yeah, just drop, possibly dropping this one. Just if you, um, if you squint or, um, you know, kind of like look at it in the, the luminance values, this, this is one of the brightest things currently. Um, just kind of drawing our, our eye away from the focus. But it, it should still, it can still be there um, as like in these elements and that it really helps sell the metal quality um, mm. of the teapot. Maybe it's more to do with the resolution of the map that's providing the dimples, that the dimples feel soft. Yep. Yeah, maybe, um, probably not for tonight, but maybe I'll experiment with like getting another kind of texture in the roughness for mm. that because um yeah actually at first i didn't even have the bump in there and i was like oh it's not bad but maybe if i can add like scratches and stuff for interest rather than dimples that's more high res cool i'll look into it the dimples just remind me of uh pounded copper which would be on a teapot i think um. right I, I have a teapot like that <laughs> mm -hmm. i guess that's why it's like oh that's pretty cool to me but so it just reminded me of, the, you know how they have those little hammer pounded uh, copper look? I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah, like that. I, yeah, I it's, so. yeah. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's actually like a copper pounded copper or a yeah. pounded metal. It actually looks really nice. I like the texture yeah. a lot. And that's what I, I like. Yeah, again, I like the texture of it. it yeah. Does, yeah. It does seem, now I don't have, I have it on very small screens. So. so. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, that's, that's a good point. Detailed detail, but it does just look like, from what I can tell, it just looks like a, a hammered copper teapot, which is kind of cool. Yeah, so maybe maybe uh, to, to Matt Matt's point, uh, maybe there's a, a higher res texture of, of sure. that, of like that style that you could bring in. Um, yeah. 
Cool. Thank you. Or you could alternatively, you could also lean into the sort of handmade aspect to it and, and try and add a little bit of warp to it. So it feels like it is actually ham hammered. Mm. You know, maybe at the moment it's, it's feeling artificial in part because it comes across as a little bit overly smooth, but also because it's quite sort of regular, almost noise like with the way that mm. it's currently got the dimples. Mm. Um, whereas the, the texture that was shown with the, the copper, you know, you could sort of see there was some deformity to the different, um, hits. Maybe. Yeah, for sure. I mean, maybe you might be able to simulate that with a like a gentle warp on the on the texture. Like if if it's a if it's a regular texture, maybe a slight warp or something to it without sort of breaking through the UV borders mm -hmm. might allow that to sort of read as a little bit of breakup. That makes sense. The only other thing that I sort of see that I think I'll point out is, um, see how at the top left there, you've got the uh, spoon sitting in the container? Mm. Yeah, that guy. So um, one thing you might want to do if you're framing this next time would be to try and make sure that the, the spoon sort of leans away from the edge of the character, because it kind mm. of really feels like you've got two lines that are very close to each other, but sort of sitting on top of each other. Um, Mm -hmm. Like if that was sort of, like at the moment, let's say it's one o'clock, if it was feeling like it was coming in at like two o'clock a little bit more, mm -hmm. um, it might feel a little bit more incidental and you don't have that sort of little double up of lines. Mm -hmm. That totally makes sense. That's a good point. I was considering moving it to the bottom or the closer container, but mm -hmm. I'll oh, also I mean, try. Yeah. Yep, that would work as well. <laughs> Smiley face is optional. <laughs> um, the other thing you might want to keep an eye on is the lens that you've got, because it currently feels like it's fairly wide. Wide lenses don't tend to have much depth of field. Mm, for the foreground, or overall, do you think there's too much in the background as well? Um, uh, um, not so much, not so much in the background. It just feels like the foreground starting to go a little bit too soft. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you know, you could probably find a lens that'll do it or or something. But if you're, you know, if if on a long lens you can go quite, you can have a really sort of shallow depth of field. But as you start getting wider and wider, um, that depth of field, um, sort of, it's easier to hurt infinity. So you don't get quite so much uh, out of focus where it is out of focus. That said, if it if it suits you artistically to crank it up, I'd say crank it up. Um, I mean, if nothing else, it's throwing your eye deeper into the image, which is very much the purpose of this shot. And I've got to say, I really dig that guy on the right. Yeah, yeah. I look at. I think it's actually quite a long lens. Um, in actual like okay. in Maya, but. Well, I mean, I, I'll eat my words. No, I'm wondering if like, what makes it feel wide? I'm just thinking out loud about. I mean, it, um, it might be the format and the framing. Mm -hmm. but I'll definitely look at the depth of field anyway, because of the little issue that we already talked about. So I'll keep that in mind. Thanks. Yeah, no, that's, that's a good point. Um, yeah, hopefully playing around the settings, it'll it'll kind of resolve some of those those things. I don't. Yeah, like this still feels a little bit like I I. It takes me a minute to to realize what is cup and what is uh, counter. So, but so maybe maybe a bright highlight in the foreground just to sell the idea that the cup is porcelain and shiny. Yeah, yeah, adding just like a little little bit more of like a of a spec hit, uh, separating or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Man, this is so pretty. 
Yeah, and, and I still, I've, I've, I fully decided I love how this, this lip is looking. Yay. Sweet. Well, Diana, thanks for submitting. Thank you, everyone. And thank of you, course. everyone, for giving feedback. Next up, we have Jake, I don't think is here. Um, so this is their reference from Dune. And this is their whip. Anyone have any comments right away? I I think this is already feeling like it's like some sci-fi concept art. Mm -hmm. um, I think that they've they've hit a lot of the things from this as far as like like color. Um, oops. I think the one thing right away I'm noticing is like these overhead highlights on the characters over like kind of this darker background and there are characters in here and currently both are in silhouette. Um, so I, I think there could be an opportunity to get a little bit more um, like some of that like character lighting. Uh, that top-down light that these two have and bringing that into this this piece. Yeah, but they're also reading super well against like that bright background. So it might yeah. be you try it and see kind of thing where, yeah, you're not you know, wrong. like we're not sure if it'll... Yeah, you're be right. Because this is, this is working because they, they are over that back black background. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I would if I wonder like what kind of what if they have any other references that they're come going off of because like based on that one reference and looking at this I feel like it's looks quite nice <laughs> um maybe like more more like shaped atmosphere or mist or dust mm -hmm. and things in the in the top where the light's coming from things like that could plus it up but as far as like reading the scene and colors and everything. I think it looks really great. Yeah. Anybody else? Oh, what is... Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry, Diana. Sorry. Um, is this like a reflective plane? Yeah. I just realized. I guess it's like water? Yep. Yeah, there's some reflection here. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I don't know why I read this as like a floating thing. Mm. Not like a two halves of a reflection. I yeah. did too. I didn't realize that was water. Maybe yeah. there's there's maybe less with the people like I was talking about. Maybe more with some of the the objects. There could be a bit more specular, mm. or just like like getting those highlights, um, like to help read some of this this frame a bit more because. Yeah, you're right. It's it's tough to tell where the the reflection ends and the actual object begins. Um, here as well. I mean, like this is this is going super dark, um, and this image, like a lot of this, would be super dark in this background if not for like these spec hits. You know, like mm -hmm. popping out some of these objects, like the crevices. Um, and then, I mean, in particular down here, um, it's definitely this more like, like down, downward light, um, towards, towards camera where like this, this feels more like it's away from camera a little bit and, and then getting that kind of wrap around this, uh, structure. So if it, if the goal is to get closer to the reference, maybe adjusting that this doing another version of this where there's a bit of more focus on on getting the the subjects and the structures to read um, by having more like of those spec hits. We 
But yeah, I mean, this one does a great job of just drawing my eye immediately to where they want it. Anybody else? All righty. Well, then next we will move over to uh, Eris, which this one was submitted, I think, the first week we were on our, our little two-week break. Um, but this is the, another uh, Villeneuve film reference. So this is uh, Blade Runner, the, the latest one that they were using. Um, and similar similar thing where this I'll, I'll find the original while well, other people say things but specular spec spec hits are uh crucial in the the reference from this yeah i love that they managed to get that um extra yellow section and on the on screen left in there yeah i like that addition a lot Anybody else? Um, you said you said you're pulling up reference or, or no? Yep, here it is. Okay, this is the reference. So go back to the original. So I think like for sure outside the window. Um, I I just can say the the like the super dark black outside doesn't justify like that nice highlight on that sheet so like no, I, I think the reference and seeing that like outside yeah is, are yeah we something? i think eventually there will get that will okay. be placed sure yeah uh, i mean yeah it's super clear that like they, they want that bright light coming in so like just getting that in there i think is gonna uh just be careful like putting that in might justify that highlight and then like you might find that it dictates that you do even more mm -hmm. work. Um, That's a good thought. This is definitely, it'd be a good good thing to go ahead and just get them in at this point. Yeah, like just get it in and see what happens because yeah. um, it might look, like right now I would say it doesn't, look, it looks off because like it's not white there, but like once you add some white back there, some other things in the set might start looking off mm -hmm. and then you can kind of address it, you know, from there. Oh yeah, or we could just do this. <laughs> nice. I think that it'll the windows in particular will look very nice with like a light wrap around the the things in the middle. I think that'll really help it stand out. Like as you're doing this for us, like it's like okay, well that amount of white, I feel like the character now needs like stronger rims. Yeah, I think. No, it, it it'll definitely help with like establishing the motivation for for how to how to light this interior. But you're right, like, I mean, like, this this is feeling more motivated, or it feels like, like, this one should be brighter to motivate that. Um, mm -hmm. But then this character, like, is, is, is kind of falling into, like, they just don't, they don't have those strong spec highlights that, um, I mean, I guess you don't really have it with this character. They're also wearing clothing that dictates, like, yeah. Yeah. But then this character on the ground, like, is getting it, you know, yeah. and it's helping helping them kind of stand out, like the the boot here, his his head, and then you, of course get a little bit of that. Um, that here. outfit that uh, Ryan Gosling is wearing, um, the guy standing is is a lot of fur, um, mm -hmm. so like I feel like getting some of that material might help as well. If possible, because yeah. I know hair is a pain in the butt to do. Yeah, even um, making the everything on the character that's in the scene dark will make sure that there's like no, not as much. Yeah, just make it silhouetted more, even with the same amount of light, because right now it's probably like bouncing around them and they're catching mm -hmm. a lot more diffuse light than you want. Well, I think it's like, what are what do we want to look at? you know in yeah the scene. i think that's the main question because in the reference we're looking at probably the guy on the floor right yeah we're um, looking at we're looking at floor there's this dust is in the air because he was just mm -hmm. thrown through this wall like mm -hmm. 
you're you're kind of like pulled into this this world and and you're right the attention isn't this this dude it's yeah. it's very clearly the aftermath of what just happened um and yeah so i like the oh go ahead no yeah, you go ahead diana so i like the like i like that they added a character but now i'm wondering like what's going on because i think last time we were kind of like talking about how the there's items on the floor and then like a sheet by the window so it could be like a completely different story and it kind of made sense within its own but now with the new character i'm like what's what's really going on and i think that's something to think about there's i don't currently i don't know what any any of these things are oops down here Mm -hmm. or this or this um or this so you know here you're drawn to the floor you see the rubble like they're big pieces of rubble. They're tiny ones too, but like they're these big glints we're getting and, and like um, we know exactly what happened um, in the scene and they're drawing our eye down there and making it easy as a viewer to read. Whereas here, um, you know, if I'm squinting the areas that I get drawn to are here and here and there's nothing really going on in either of those zones. And then in this area, like, I can't make out what is going on. Um, So I think you're right. Solidifying a story will help. And then um, decluttering the image to tell the story will also help. I think if you're slavishly copying the, the reference, you start running into a problem, though, in that we know, having seen the scene, what happens. You know, the guy comes through the wall, there's dust kicked up, guy's thrown on the floor, it's dramatic. And part of what they're doing is they're having us look at the negative space, which is usually a pretty hard thing to ask, um, especially if you're looking to show it as a lighting piece. Like it may be the sort of thing where you'd hit the broad notes of this, but then you'd go away and try and make sure you're actually getting some light on the guy in the middle to bridge the idea that you can't see the context like we're seeing this as a one-off still. So you still need to be able to showcase good lighting ability on the guy that's standing in the middle, even if you're then you know, changing his albedo so he's dark in silhouette. You know, you're, you're getting a closer match to the fur albedo instead of the more sort of white that, that he currently has. Um, generally, if you're wanting to do a, do a silhouette, you still need to actually light the, the forms well. Um, otherwise they just look like paper cutouts. Um, and I mean, what we're seeing here at the moment, like we're getting some bounce off the ground. We're seeing some edge lighting, like he's, he's starting to come on. But I think if, if, if overall they start taking this central character darker, you know, maybe it's the sort of thing where you try to make sure you're keeping some sort of edge light on him, because I, I suspect if you take them as far as the actual reference still people are mm-hmm. going to be going okay well that's great but where am i actually se- where am i meant to be looking i'm sure it's meant to be the guy on the floor but at the moment we're not seeing a guy on the floor so we're not getting that connection we're not seeing that played up we're, our eyes are going to assume that you know we're talking about the guy that's in the middle in between the two bright lights and uh, i just don't want to lose um too much of, of the lighting work that's being done there. Um, you know, maybe it's the sort of thing you show it two ways. You go along and say, okay, here's me trying to do a, a natural match, but here it is, you know, mm. sort of as a separate still mm. where, you know, I'm showcasing the lighting that the, the guy could have if he was in this situation. That's a good thought. And and yeah. you, you think... um like with this, like if the, like if their goal is to to match it, but not, yeah, you know, they don't have all the tools they need to get like one to one with with props, characters. Um, are there things you think that they should still kind of pull from here? Like, do you feel like because of that the action, se- like scene of this, that maybe they should avoid getting some of the smoky effect in here, or do you feel that you'd want to see that? I mean, if you could get the smoky effect in there, that'd be great. But the story point in that still is, look at this guy that's prone on the floor. 
he's you know beaten the guy is looming over him and there's two forms the one on the ground that we're sort of able to see some sort of shape on and the other one that's a big black hole you know he's scary and in the in the piece that's being worked on we don't have that character on the ground to make the connection with we can't see that there's a figure there to go oh that that we're, we're meant to be taking that story point mm-hmm. currently we've got the guy in the middle who for all we know is staring out the windows so if we then make him big and dark okay then it's big and dark but we don't understand the motion motivation behind it yeah right it's, it's got a different story point in this reference as is and this image as is and the other one where we can see the you know the broken hole the dust that's been kicked up the rubble that's been kicked around and the guy standing over the other one going you know, where are we going to take this fight next? Uh, this current image, it's it's a messy room. It's not a fight fight area. Mm-hmm. And I think you'd want to be a little bit sensitive to how you're doing it because, you know, you could make it match, but then you'd be you'd be making this story point that you do have in this image darker and hard to hard to see. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So maybe yeah. so it's like be you can be heavily influenced by that that image but then what what is what do you need to do to serve the story of your image mm-hmm. like, exactly yeah that's a great point yeah i feel like something similar is happening with the other room that they added which like i i like that you know it's getting closer to the reference but it's also like what what is that room in this story or like in this house you know um so i think yeah definitely that's the choice to be made of like what's the story and like where what kind of things do i want to pull from the reference if it's not going to be a Mm one-to-one on it on all on all counts i mean it might be really interesting to try putting a second copy of that that central figure down on the ground and just see how he looks you know, you've got the puddles of light by the guy's feet. Maybe try it. Yeah. Sweet. Well, yeah. Uh, I think that's a good bit to work on, Eris. And uh, thank you, everyone, for giving feedback. Uh, next up, I think this one's already been submitted, but they shared it too. Um, maybe they'll have a final hour to make tweaks before submission, but. Um, I love, I love the addition of the Christmas lights. Mm -hmm. I've already started listening to Christmas music at work, so. Anyone have any feedback? I think I would just get a little bit of a kicker on the right side of the right character. With this guy? Yeah, just... So, he seems just... Yeah, just something just like ever so slightly. Just kick a little bit of like fake kicker light up into uh, the skin or whatever. And then... No, that's what, that's what I would do. Yeah. I feel like maybe even a little bit of fill from that side overall on like um overall in the foreground like here mm. sorry and under the saucers and yeah is... like I like the contrasty nature of the image but I'm wondering if maybe there's too many pockets of darkness yeah but yeah like having this and then and here and here you get drawn to that shape whereas like i think these shapes down here are some of the most interesting these kind of bars um and but then yeah it's like pitch black almost in there and then here is close to pitch mm-hmm. black this is feeling super black down here yeah the other thing that happens with this character is like the tea bag gets really hard to like understand when it's so dark. So that'll help that too. Yeah. The last thing with this dude, I think, is 
one of one of the things I think that exposes and it, like a not necessarily a flaw, but it's just like something to watch out for with this particular character is when you shine light and it goes through the hair and it hits the like very like just solid blue material of his body it like starts to reveal this kind of like wiry punched in hair look that like i think you've done a good job hiding from both both of these characters um but it's just getting like just full-on exposed right there um as well as just that hair in general being a bit dark so maybe it's lowering the the light hitting him here but bumping the uh, base color of the fur um and just kind of hiding those that uh the you know the the flat material underneath him yeah anyone else yeah, the fur here is like there's like a bald patch right up right on his eyebrows. Yeah, it goes. And then the, yeah, I'm not sure if that's like what 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 exactly is happening because I didn't like work too much with this character, but um, worth looking into. I mean, it's kind of a look too. Yeah, maybe it's even like darkening that um, that skin the underneath skin. or something to to help with that. And the eyes, I feel like the way the eyes are shaped are a little too uneven to me. And it looks like his eyes are kind of maybe not looking in the same direction. Or I think the highlights are what do it, these four highlights. And then I think, I guess, plus the way that the iris is shaped. But I might see maybe about removing these and um, making sure that this one is a little closer to this. Because I think you would want the ding on the key side to be a little brighter and currently this one is a little brighter mm -hmm. little details but i might try <laughs> see what it looks like yeah and that the sclera is looking a bit dull overall um yeah I was, I was just gonna say like everything i've done previously whoever's critiquing it always has me basically deset like take the color out of the sclera and have it be as white as possible um, without it being just blown out, of course. But yeah. Yes, maybe look into the, that eye material and those dings. Anybody else? Um, so we have the next is uh, one submitted from Shrey, and then we have. Uh, Alex submitted a uh, update to the the rage video, so we'll give oh, cool. we'll give on this one and then go to that. So I think someone asked for a reference and there wasn't any provided yet. Um, and I think this is a good one to know the reference because this could be like some like high art style, high contrast look, or this could. This could be um, there's too much contrast going on, um, and like that needs to be reined back in. Um, but like overall, we are like super bright in here, um, and then you know super dark over here as well as there are bits of it that are washed out, um, and the other parts are not. And then on the material side, his eyebrow feels like it's plastic. And the the eyes also feel like they're they're um, kind of glowing and and piercing through the skin. Those are my initial thoughts. I do think it's cool. Like I think if it's going for like a high art look or like a this is a cool model for that, just because of how weird he is and how wrinkly and like like so. I'm down for that to be the the goal and really play that up um but it'd be helpful to see the reference um and and start to get like a a less noisy render um 
Yeah, anyone have any thoughts? Yeah, I agree with what you said. It would depend on what you're going for. If yeah. this is just like standard portrait lighting, yeah. It would be different notes than if it was a specific reference that mm -hmm. kind of had this black and white aesthetic. So either way, they're definitely material issues that, that need to um, mm -hmm. kind of be worked out for e for either approach. So I would start there and then if you can submit some reference. I also like what the shadows his shadows doing back here, kind of like breaking up that that background. Cool. All righty. Well then, let's jump over to Vimeo. Let me grab the latest. So, Alex was saying this is close close to final. I'm just wondering if there are any final. Bits of feedback. Oh, I see the um, low gradient in the like orange to purple. Looks cool. Anyone have any thoughts right away? I mean, I think it's looking pretty awesome. It's a cool art style. I think um, it's cool to see this lightning. Um, and again, props to Matthew for giving us an awesome tutorial on how to do that. And I like the light influence that you have um, from the lightning on the character. Yeah, thank you so much, Matthew. You really helped me push this piece like a lot further. And everyone here really helped me push this piece a lot further. Yeah, thanks for listening. It looks great. The highlight in the eyes and teeth kind of catch my head a little bit, especially, yeah, like in the screen right eye in the beginning. And then I see some of that same shape kind of in the teeth. I don't know if it's like worth a re-render, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you've already got like these spec, these like art artistic specs that I assume are kind of in the um, texture. actual texture. You could yeah, almost, no. you could lose that almost. And then I'd say, I agree with Diana that, and I think I've said this a couple of times that like, I still, I get drawn to his mouth. Um, and I don't think I necessarily want to really until here, you know, and, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, even it, in doing this, you know, like his teeth still feel, especially with the spec hits, they just, it feels brighter than his eyes. Um, mm -hmm. and so I think, yeah, he, yeah I've been trying to tweak those a bit. What were you going to say, Diana? Um, I think if you remove the spec and then kind of see how you could darken it down just like a little bit in comp and you might find that it sits a lot better in the mouth until later when, when I think you want it to be like blinding. Yeah. Yeah. You could okay. like, like fade it in there. Um, I mean, I mean that the, whatever light you have going on here probably is going to do that work for you still, but, mm -hmm. but yeah, like that, that spec on his teeth is just really tight. And like, then there's this, it's almost like glowing right here and here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and his gums are super saturated. So that would be that would be my final thing is just work on, on getting, t taking priority away from the mouth, because um, I I really do think it's, you know, like it's part of it, but it's it's not the most important thing, and I keep I keep getting pulled to it. No, that makes complete sense. Anybody else? Great, great work on the yeah on the scene it's like a lot of improvement in the in a few weeks so yeah nice great. work man 
Thank you so much. Well, this concludes the recorded part. So I'm, I'm will hit record shortly. And afterwards, we just, uh, for those of you who are watching on YouTube, we just hang out and chat afterwards. So definitely consider coming and hang out and, and joining with us. Um, thank you everyone who attended today, um, who submitted and who gave feedback. And we shall see you next week.